Laura Koonsberg, Sundays at 9 on BBC One and iPlayer. Slash News Daily. Be ready. Change can happen in an instant. Check on the BBC Weather app. At six, the Chancellor unveils his first budget with big changes to childcare, pensions and benefits. Jeremy Hunt says the economy is on the right track and the plan is working. But Labour says the UK is on a path of managed decline. Today, we build for the future. With inflation down, debt falling and growth up, the declinists are wrong and the optimists are right. Like millions across our country, this budget leaves us stuck in the waiting room with only a sticking plaster to hand. Yeah. A country set on a path of managed decline, yeah. falling behind our competitors, the sick man of Europe once again. Yeah. The government's independent forecaster has today warned of the sharpest fall in living standards since the 1950s and predicts house prices will drop by 10%. Tonight, we'll look at the key measures unveiled by the Chancellor as he tries to get more people into work. 30 hours of free childcare is one of them. It's being expanded in England to cover children from nine months old. Who are we going to afford to be able to put her in nursery for some days a week so I can go back to work? So it, it's quite difficult, really. Um, but announcing this sounds really promising. There'll be changes to the benefits, benefit system with tougher sanctions for claimants who won't get a job. And promoting nuclear energy. It's being reclassified as environmentally sustainable to drive more investment in the sector. Coming up on the BBC News Channel, he admits their chances are way for thin, but Jurgen Klopp says Liverpool will have a go at overturning a 5-2 deficit in their Champions League last 16 tie at Real Madrid. Good evening. The Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, has pledged to build for the future in his first budget, promising it will deliver growth. He told MPs that the economic forecast has improved, the economy will shrink slightly but avoid going into recession this year, with inflation predicted to fall to just under 3% by the end of the year. The big focus was on getting more people into work, with changes to childcare, benefits and pensions. In England, free childcare will be expanded to all children over the age of nine months with up to 30 hours a week for eligible households. There'll be money for schools to provide wraparound childcare outside the school day. That's from September. On benefits, there are plans to apply universal credit sanctions for those refusing to work more rigorously. On pensions, there are changes to tax rules to enable high earners to save more into their pensions tax-free. It's hoped it will encourage people, particularly senior doctors, to return to work. But the government's independent forecasters, the OBI, say we still face the sharpest fall in living standards since the 1950s. And Labour has accused the government of sticking plaster politics. Our first report tonight is from our political editor, Chris Mason. When will things actually get better, Chancellor? There have been rather a few Chancellors of late. Here is the current one, Jeremy Hunt, the fourth in a year and a big personal moment. At one end of Downing Street, his wife and children. At the other end, out on Whitehall and beyond, this again. Striking workers, schools closed, demonstrations. to end the strikes, Chancellor. The answers, or lack of them, would come down the road in Parliament. The overall message, 
things are tough, but improving. I report today on a British economy which is proving the doubters wrong. The UK will not now enter a technical recession this year. Soaring energy bills have been a massive factor in crippling family finances in the last year. The government's help to ease the burden is to be extended until the summer. This measure will save the average family a further £160 on top of the energy support measures already announced. Here's another choice the Chancellor's made, maintaining the 5p a litre cut in fuel duty and not putting it up in line with rising prices. That saves the average driver £100 next year and around £200 since the 5p cut was introduced. The headline rate of corporation tax is going up, not popular among all his MPs. Businesses will pay less, though, if they put money into their future growth. That means that every single pound a company invests in IT equipment, plant or machinery can be deducted in full and immediately from taxable profits. A big part of this budget is getting more people into work. There are measures to help those with disabilities and 50 and 60-somethings tempted to retire. Now they'll be able to save more in a pension tax-free every year. And the Chancellor will... ...abolish the lifetime allowance altogether. It is a pension tax reform that will stop over 80% of NHS doctors from receiving a tax charge. Incentivise our most experienced and productive workers to stay in work for longer. Critics say it will help the already very well off. Childcare has become a big political battleground between Labour and the Conservatives. Mr Hunt said this about his plans for England. We will introduce 30 hours of free childcare, not just for three and four year olds, but for every single child over the age of nine months. It's a package worth, on average, £6,500 every year and reduces their childcare costs by nearly 60%. But it won't be fully up and running for two and a half years. In the round, ministers want this to be seen as a steady-as-you-go budget. The declinists are wrong and the optimists are right. We, We stick to the plan because the plan is working and I commend this statement to the House. In response, the opposition parties were scathing. Manage decline, Britain going backwards, the sick man of Europe once again. That's the Britain they've created and they should look it in the eye. A UK whose performance deteriorated after the Brexit referendum, both in absolute and relative terms. And a country, the only one in the G7, where the economy has not returned to its pre pandemic level. Mortgage bills are up, the cost of the weekly shop is up, energy prices are up, all because of conservative chaos. What do you say to people who say this is a budget for the rich, allowing people who are already well off, already earn a lot, save more into their pensions? Well, of course we want to uh, help older people uh, who want to stay in work and by definition they will generally be on higher salaries, but nearly five times more help is going to young parents. Your official forecasters say that the freezing of the income tax thresholds over six years is the equivalent to putting 4p on income tax. You're you're clobbering people. I thought Conservatives were meant to cut taxes. Conservatives cut taxes when they can. Uh, Today I cut corporation tax by nine billion pounds. But remember this... And raise the headline rate. Yes, but the pandemic we spent 400 billion pounds to support businesses and families. How much of today is still about shoveling up the mess of your Conservative predecessors? It's not. Today is about... None of it? No. The financial statistics about the country, they've completely recovered from that. Today is about a long-term growth plan. Hello, boys and girls. The blunt political truth is Conservative opinion poll ratings have not recovered. He, they, have a lot of persuading to do. And the real scrutiny is beginning this evening as the documents, and there's hundreds of pages of them, are poured over. A couple of things worth highlighting from my initial flick through them. A prediction that net migration will be nearly a quarter of a million people a year. Now remember the context of this is the Conservatives promising at the last last election that immigration would come down. 
and a quick prediction too about the political row to come. It's going to be, I think, uh, about pensions and those perks for those who earn the most. Uh, Labour will go after the government on this and force it to a vote at the beginning of next week. Chris, thank you. The independent watchdog, the Office for Budget Responsibility, predicts the UK economy will shrink this year but will avoid a technical recession. That's when it shrinks for two quarters in a row. It warned of a big drop in living standards over the next two years, the sharpest since records began in the 1950s, and house prices are predicted to fall by 10%. Our economics editor, Faisal Islam, has been looking at the numbers behind today's budget. The Chancellor called it a comprehensive plan for growth, but the backdrop is of a flat economy, of widespread strikes even today, of declining living standards and some concerns going forward. This is what the government's official independent forecaster, the OBR, thinks is going to happen with the economy versus where they were in November. Better up front this year, not a recession but still down, but a touch worse in future years after the election. Broadly speaking, the forecast looks a bit better this year. That's mostly luck. That's the economy doing a bit better. That's um, uh, energy prices going up less than uh, expected. Over the medium term, a little bit of the additional growth is, according to the Office of Budget Responsibility, down to some of the measures that we've seen in particular, expecting to get a few more people into work. The Chancellor's central aim is a plan for growth that implicitly acknowledges two core problems, a lack of workers and very low investment. The OBR has given an early verdict that it could boost the workforce by between 55 and 250,000. But look at this pattern on the new corporation tax break. New allowances lead to a boom in investment now, but then a sharp correction as the policy is assumed to end in three years, with no overall increase in investment. The big picture here is that the fall in global gas prices has improved the short-term picture and helped the Chancellor have some options. So he's chosen to carry on borrowing in order to deal with two longer-term economic problems, that shortage of workers and that poor business investment. And he's done so with dozens of smaller policies aimed to boost growth longer-term and a couple of big bets on corporation tax and on childcare. But will that impact on the hit to households that's been so profound over the past couple of years? This shows post-inflation disposable income for households. It was already predicted to fall sharply over two years. While it falls less now than predicted in November, the official forecaster says this is an historic fall in living standards. Back in November, we thought that living standards were going to fall by about 7%. That's because inflation was outstripping growth in earnings over this financial year and next. Because we're now seeing lower inflation and also slightly higher wage deals, we think that the fall in living standards is going to be only 6%. But that's still a historic two-year fall in living standards in the UK and not something we've seen since we started collecting records on these things back in the 1950s. The so-called back-to-work budget came on a day of strikes in schools and the wider public sector planting their flag outside the Treasury. For now, no extra money for that, but I hope that settlements are on the way. Above all, the Chancellor stressed the need for economic and financial stability. And against that backdrop, the FTSE 100, the UK stock market, had its biggest one-day drop since the pandemic. That's mainly driven not by the budget, but fears about some European banks suffering in the wake of the US bank failures earlier this week. Sterling and the government borrowing rates were more normal today, but everyone's waiting to see if the plan for growth really does get people back to work and deliver a jumpstart to growth. Sophie. Faisal, thank you. Well, the UK has one of the most expensive childcare systems in the world. Free childcare in England is now being expanded to encourage more parents to return to work. This is what's been announced. If both parents are in work and earning at least £152 per week, they will be eligible for 30 free hours of childcare per week from the age of nine months. That's for England, with equivalent funding given to other nations. The scheme will be phased in from next April with eligible two-year-olds getting 15 hours and all measures are expected to be in place by September 2025. Each carer in England will also be able to look after five two-year-olds instead of four, as is already the case in Scotland. The 700,000 families on universal credit will get childcare support paid up front instead of claiming it back. And they'll also be able to claim for more help if they are moving into work or increasing their hours.
The government also said they'd work with local councils to ensure all schools in England will offer wraparound care between 8am and 6pm by September 2026. Our political correspondent Alex Forsyth has been meeting parents in the West Midlands to see what they think of the announcements. <laughs> Few parents would have been jumping for joy over the cost of childcare of late. So at this baby sensory group in West Bromwich, today's announcement was broadly welcomed. Many here who want to work know the struggle of juggling that with childcare costs. I worked out that to go back three days, I couldn't actually afford the childcare for three days. So I have to go back four to be able to put her in nursery for four. But then I have that mum guilt of, but I'm leaving her. So hopefully it'll actually help. But Sarah, a teacher keen to return to her job, is frustrated that she'll have to wait until next September before she sees any benefit. In that year, um, how, how are we going to afford to be able to put her in nursery for some days a week so I can go back to work? So it, it's quite difficult, really. Um, but announcing this sounds really promising. What does Kieran do then? In nearby Walsall, this nursery is working out what the change will mean for them. This is already a sector under strain, facing rising costs and staff shortages. Director Debbie is concerned that even though the government is increasing the funding for free childcare hours by 30%, they'll be left short. I think it will make, close more certain nurseries than it will save because they won't be able to afford to keep running. Even with that extra money that the Chancellor's... It's not enough. 30% will not cover the costs. She's already decided that here they won't reduce the number of staff for younger children, one option announced today to try to ease pressures. They're very vulnerable at two and it's going to affect the workforce as well. It's extra pressure, having that one extra child per adult. Not far away, this town was named by the Chancellor as one of those in line for regeneration. Cutting childcare costs was one element of a budget meant to boost the stagnant economy, the wider West Midlands given special status to attract investment. But at this martial arts club in West Bromwich, some challenges feel more immediate. Here, the extended help with energy bills is welcome, as is the promise of falling inflation. But the reality now is still tough. We've ended up paying 575 and gone up to £1,100 a month in rent. Your rent, so your rent's doubled? Yeah. How's that affecting you? Hard work at the minute, because we can't afford to eat. I feel like sometimes like, a lot of the food at college is like, also quite expensive, so I'm struggling a lot as well, from money-wise, in that situation, because a lot of us just gone up in price. The club leaders, though, are hopeful for the future. We try and create an environment where people see opportunity, even when you're in an area such as West Bromwich and the West Midlands, which doesn't have a lot of prosperity compared to other areas. Some economic optimism might have been the tone the Chancellor was trying to strike. The question, though, is whether his budget leaves people feeling better off. Alex Forsyth, BBC News, West Bromwich. So there were also significant changes announced to a range of benefits to encourage people back into work today. Our social affairs correspondent, Michael Buchanan, is with me now. And you've been looking at them. They are big changes. Explain what they're going to mean. Indeed. The government plans to scrap the work capability assessment. This is a test used to prove that people are too ill to work and therefore they get extra benefit. From 2026, the only people who will get that extra money are those who qualify for the main disability benefit, PIP, meaning they won't have to take two tests. They will also keep that top up if they move into a work, unlike the situation at the moment. However, there are a large group of people who do qualify for this top up at the moment, but not for the disability benefit. So for new claimants, when these changes come in, if they don't get the disability benefit, they won't get the top up and they will be expected to work. Ministers are also intending to bring in artificial intelligence to automatically cut people's benefits if they fall foul of the system, particularly if they turn down a job offer. It's worth pointing out that sanctions at the moment are at near record levels and the academic literature suggests they do not work in moving people into a job. And finally, a word on those over 50s everybody keeps talking about and the extent to which the benefit system can move them into a job. The Resolution Foundation think tank has calculated that just one in 10 of those aged 55 to 59 who stopped working at the start of the pandemic rely on benefits to get by. Michael Buchanan, thank you. So how will the Chancellor's announcements today affect people in Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland? In a moment, we'll hear from Emma Vardy in Belfast and Thomas Morgan in Cardiff. 
but first to Alexandra McKenzie in Glasgow. Many of today's announcements don't apply here in Scotland. Instead, the Scottish Government will get £320 million as part of the block grant and could choose, for example, to extend free childcare. The freeze in the energy price cap does apply to Scotland. That's been extended till the end of June. And the freeze in fuel duty for another year. In the arts, up to £8.6 million has been given directly to the Edinburgh festivals. This has been welcomed by the Scottish tourism sector. The SNP say this is yet another wasted opportunity by the UK government to help businesses and households through the cost of living crisis. On Jeremy Hunt's first headline announcement on childcare, the Welsh Labour government is already coming under pressure from opposition parties to follow suit. A phased expansion of childcare for two-year-olds is already being rolled out across Wales. And the Cabinet here say they will consider how best to spend the extra money from this year's budget. Now on Jeremy Hunt's second major announcement, the expansion of the energy price cap guarantee, that is important for two reasons here in Wales. Firstly, because generally homes are older here and less energy efficient. And secondly, because wages are lower, which means a higher percentage of household income goes towards fuel payments compared to more affluent parts of the UK. And lastly, it's worth mentioning something that wasn't in the budget. No extra funding towards the public sector. This is something the Welsh Labour Government have been calling for for some time, because almost a third of Wales works in the public sector. And the Welsh Labour Government's response to this, that this is a budget that prioritises petrol and potholes over investment in the public sector. Overall, the Treasury says Northern Ireland is getting an extra £130 million of funding over the next couple of years. It's not going to feel like an awful lot here because local finances are under extreme pressure. That free childcare won't apply to Northern Ireland because that's something for the devolved government at Stormont to decide whether to follow. And there's no government sitting here at the moment because of divisions over Brexit. As for the energy price cap, well, customers in Northern Ireland already had a little more generous relief from energy bills earlier on this winter. So in effect, energy prices here will increase slightly. There was one or two other pots of money for specific things in Northern Ireland, one of them being Northern Ireland's tackling paramilitarism programme. There's an extra £3 million for that. It's something pretty unique to this place. It's to help communities deal with the effects of the armed gangs that still operate here. Mavardi there. Well, there was a lot in the budget today. The Chancellor was on his feet for an hour. So let's have a look at some of the other measures that he announced. The energy price guarantee will remain until the start of July. Those on prepayment meters will be charged the same as those on direct debit. To help pubs, the tax on a typical pint of draft beer will be frozen from August the 1st. And cigarette duty will increase by 15%. For drivers, fuel duty has been frozen for another year. And there's £200 million for pothole repairs in England. Our business editor, Simon Jack, is here to look at what it all means for business. Simon. Thank you, Sophie. Yes, the Chancellor branded this budget a budget for growth, and he will need businesses to help him deliver on that. Now, something many businesses were hoping the government might reverse is the rising corporation tax from 19 to 25% that's scheduled from April the 1st. And that's the rate of tax that will be paid on profits over £250,000. So the government says only 10% of companies will pay that rate. But to soften the blow, the Chancellor will allow companies to deduct every pound they invest in new IT, new plant, new machinery from their profits, meaning the more companies invest, the less tax they will pay. But that's replacing a more generous scheme which ends this month. And this new scheme is only promised for three years. The government also wants to uh, help some of those who have left their jobs back into the workforce. We've heard something about childcare measures, but there are also measures aimed at older workers. The cap on the amount workers can accumulate in their pension pot over their lifetime before having to pay extra tax is currently just over £1 million, will be abolished entirely. You keep working, you keep saving. And the amount workers and their employers can put in those pension pots tax-free every year will be raised from 40 to £60,000. Opposition parties say these are tax cuts for the very highly paid. And to further tackle labour shortages, 
Immigration rules will also be relaxed for some roles in the construction sector, including bricklayers, roofers and carpenters. Other sectors struggling to recruit, including things like retail and hospitality, are disappointed they weren't included in that. Overall, the budget watchdog thinks these measures will boost growth or at least help the economy not shrink so much, but the impact will fade if those investment incentives aren't permanent. Sophie. Simon, thank you. Well, another significant focus was on energy as the Chancellor announced plans to ensure a quarter of Britain's energy will come from nuclear power. They are reclassifying nuclear energy as environmentally sustainable to drive more investment in the sector. It's already met with some opposition, as our climate editor, Justin Rowlatt, reports. Nuclear is big and it is expensive. The new reactor being built here at Hinkley Point in Somerset is the largest construction site in Europe. But nuclear power does deliver dependable energy 24-7 and the Chancellor confirmed today it will be a key tool for achieving the UK's ambition of reducing greenhouse gas emissions so they reach net zero. It's absolutely essential that we have nuclear as part of Britain's energy mix if we're to meet the net zero targets that the government set and which can tackle the climate change emergency. We know the wind doesn't always blow and the sun doesn't always shine, so renewables can do most of it. But if we're to meet the net zero targets, we absolutely need new nuclear. And if you thought this is what green power looks like, think again. Nuclear power is to be classified as environmentally sustainable, alongside wind and solar, the Chancellor said. Redesignating it as green means it will get the same investment incentives as renewable power, despite the long-term risks from nuclear waste. I mean, is it April Fool's Day? I mean, this is utterly ludicrous. How can an energy source be green when, for example, there is a huge amount of nuclear waste? We still don't know what to do with it. It remains radioactive for hundreds and hundreds of years. Nevertheless, we can expect to see new kinds of reactors in future, including smaller scale plants that could look a bit like this. We learned today that a new company, Great British Nuclear, will help drive investment in these and other nuclear technologies. Justin Rowlatt, BBC News. So, all in all, a lot of detail to go through in today's budget. But if you go to BBC Online, you can find out plenty more about what it means for you and your money. You can get there by going to bbc.co.uk forward slash news, or you can also use the BBC News app. The budget was announced against a backdrop of widespread public sector strikes in England. Teachers, junior doctors, civil servants, London underground workers and journalists. Thousands of teachers and civil servants and other workers held a rally in Trafalgar Square in London today. Teaching unions want above inflation increases, but the government says it will only hold formal talks if the National Education Union calls off its strikes. Meanwhile, shares in the troubled Swiss banking giant Credit Suisse have plunged to a record low after the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank in the United States. The Swiss bank shares sank by 30% at one point after comments by its biggest investor that it couldn't provide the bank with more funding. Credit Suisse insisted its financial position was not a concern, but the worries spread across share markets with all major indexes falling sharply. To Norfolk now, where a number of cliffside homes have been lost to the sea because of coastal erosion. Just this weekend, three houses were demolished after high tides and two more are earmarked to be pulled down in the seaside resort of Hemsby. One resident is even trying to save his property by physically moving it. As our East of England correspondent Joe Black reports, the council is hoping to use tonnes of rock to shore up the coastline. For decades, this part of the Norfolk coast has been slipping away. But the recent bad weather and high tides caught residents in Hemsby by surprise. Over the weekend, chalet-style houses started to crumble or were totally demolished before the water could take them. Sue lost her home. She knew erosion was a problem, but didn't think this would happen so soon. The benefits of seeing that every day, the sun and the water and like I said, 99% of the time, the erosion was very, very slow. It was a very unique place to be. When Lance Martin moved here in 2017, he had 50 metres of sand dune behind his property. A year later, he dragged his house forward, but it's still unclear if he can do this again to escape the threat of the sea. 
But if this goes, mm. this is a devastating moment, isn't it? It, it will be devastating, and I'll uh, shed a tear for a minute or two, then I'll pack my bags and move on. We're actually, you know, demolishing people's homes, you know, uh, whether it be your second home or, or your main home. And I do really feel sorry for these people, but obviously, you know, we safety comes into uh, play. In the last 10 years, around 20 properties have been lost from these dunes, and now access to another 20 homes could be under threat if the damage to this road gets any worse. 1,900 tonnes of rock will be brought in to slow the erosion, a temporary measure with a bigger wall of rock planned for the future. The government has allocated £36 million over six years in places like North Norfolk to help communities adapt to a changing climate. But for some, the dream of living next to the sea is now over. Joe Black, BBC News in Hemsby. Time for a look at the weather now with Thomas. Hello. Sophie, hello and a very good evening to you. It's a very rainy picture out there at the moment across most of the UK, but very mild air is also streaming in our direction and the temperatures in some spots will be in the mid-teens over the next couple of days. Now look at the satellite picture, low pressure here out in the Atlantic, the weather streaming in from the southwest. There's a lot of soggy cloud out there. And look at this bulge of warmth across the Atlantic. This is obviously the temperature of the atmosphere. These yellow colors indicate the mild air. And you can see all of that rain spreading across much of the UK, but preceded by some snow across the highlands there, at least for a time through the course of this evening. But by the end of the night, it's mild pretty much across the board, all but the very far north of Scotland, around a couple of degrees here. But look at that, Belfast, 10 degrees. 10 degrees in London, and that's early in the morning. So tomorrow, most of the rain around the Western Isles, the Lake District, parts of Scotland too. There'll be some heavy showers breaking out elsewhere, for example, across Northern Ireland. There could even be some thunderstorm to, thunderstorms too, but look at those temperatures, 14 in London, around 13 or 14 along the North Sea coast, and about 15 or so in Northern Ireland. And the low pressure still with us on Friday, rather large area of low pressure. Its weather fronts are sweeping in. So I think on Friday, it's going to be a bit of a mixed bag. So we'll have sunny spells, occasional heavy showers too, possibly a crack of thunder in one or two places. And again, very mild with these southwesterly winds. So again, about 15 in London, and even the possibility of around 15 or 16 in one or two spots. How about the outlook? Is it going to stay mild and wet? Yes, it is. In fact, as far as the eye can see into next week, temperatures around double figures for the most part and often cloudy with rain at times. Back to you. Thomas, thank you. And that is it from us. I'll be back with more at 10 tonight. For now, goodbye. Hello, welcome to Sports.